in the name of Jesus Christ. May the grace that lifts, may the grace that announces, let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now. You are welcome to Believers Global TV. Beloved in Christ, I implore you not to miss this important message you are about to listen to. It is not by accident that you are here on this channel right now. I strongly believe that there is something God is about to do in your life through this teaching. And that is why I encourage you to listen to the end. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Today is a day of divine favor and testimony. Stay to the end. Don't go away. God bless you. God leads men, but we need to understand what it takes and the dynamics of the leadings of God. What are the keys that we must engage if we want to be led of God and led by God? Tonight I will give us five and please, every time I call us to pray, because we're going to be praying as I teach, I want you to pray with all your heart, if and when I request that you do so. It is true that God leads. But you see, God does not lead everybody, unfortunately. He wants to lead everybody. Everybody, especially in Christ, can have access to the guidance and the leadings of God. But there are conditions that must be met. Otherwise, you can never truly enjoy the leadings of God. Are you ready? Write this down first in your heart before you pen it down on paper. Number one, the first key to enjoying the shepherdhood, the leadings of God, is admit that you are limited. Please write it down. The first key to enjoying and accessing God as your shepherd is to admit that you are limited. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. The Bible clearly tells us there that we, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, not 3, my apologies, 13 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians are still limited. We pride in all kinds of things. I've traveled to Europe. I've traveled to America. I have a PhD and that is wonderful. I am a professional in this aspect. Kind of person. The meek, the Bible says, will he guide in judgment? Not the needy. Not the one who is in need of guidance. The meek. You know what it means to be meek? Meekness is a, is a spiritual quality. It's a state of brokenness where you understand that i am limited another word for meekness is teachability hallelujah the ability to be teachable lord i thank you for that which you have given me but i admit i do not know everything please give us that scripture again the meek will he guide in judgment and he says the meek will he teach his ways so could it be that the reason why many people are unable to access the leadings of god and the ways of god is because there is a desire to know but there is no meekness admit that you are limited as a man of god admit that you are limited as a businessman, admit that you are limited. Admittance is such a difficult thing for us, especially in our civilization today, because psychologically for many of us, we translate admitting limitations to mean that we are mediocre, to mean that we are not much. So everybody likes to give... Um, a, give an attitude of invincibility to the degree to which you give a... A picture of a superman that seems to be the degree to which a generation will listen to you and be loyal to you unfortunately as far as destiny is concerned that is absolute nonsense Jesus who was the word incarnate as soon as he arrived by age 12 with no sense of shame and embarrassment he marched straight to the temple to go and learn you would think this was the person that the scripture was all about 
Imagine Jesus sitting in the temple and listening to them. This was the word of God bound in earthly flesh. I can imagine the doctors of the law saying, do you understand this young man? And he says, yes, sir. The meek will he guide. For someone here, God is already speaking to you. The reason why you have not been able to make progress is pride. The inability to come before the Lord and say, Father, I do not know much. Would you teach me? What's that song? Spirit, lead me where my trust. Help me. Let me walk. of God you must admit that you are limited father thank you in spite of the Bible school in spite of the seminary in spite of all the books that I've read I, I come before you expressing my ignorance and my limitations except you lead me I cannot lead these great people you see why the request of Solomon touched the heart of God how do you come to a man in the night and now give him an open check Solomon would have said that there are five kings that have threatened me. Oh God, kill them for me. Give me rest. And Solomon said, I am but a young man. I do not have the ability to lead this so great a people. Would you grant unto your servant an understanding heart? And the Bible says God was impressed. He was touched. For someone here, if you will only humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, even now, the remaining days of this year, what God will do in your life will dwarf many years put together. The meek will he guide. There are many proud men of God. There are many proud business people. There are many people failing woefully and yet they will not listen and open up their heart to see the need to be guided. There are people who are poor and broke and they will not listen. The moment you want to talk about money, they want to contribute as colleagues. You are not getting it. It's not working in your life. There are people who are not doing well in ministry. As a principle, any area I don't have so much result, I'm usually silent. I don't, I don't, I only speak from the abundance of knowledge with results. Our world today is full of commentators, commentators without results. When you know how football is and so much also past now the person who is talking now has not been able to achieve anything and yet he's insulting someone whose weekly payment is his lifetime desire are we together now you must admit someone is having a small business for instance maybe you, you are just selling two or three items and only five people come to buy it and now you are giving all kinds of i think Shoprite can do like this i think this one can this is good they are not really very wise if it was me and yet you have your own result there and absolutely nothing is working can i tell you in the name of jesus i pray that anything that represents pride eating up your potential for rising to a, the next level i cost it from your life right now The meek will he guide in judgment. There are people who don't know anything about marriage, yet they are the first to comment on everything. They are the first to give lectures and give all kinds of orientation. There are people who don't know anything about finances and favor. There is zero manifestation of favor. Not one, not two, zero. And yet they can say anything about favor. There are people who don't know jack about the anointing. And yet they will want to teach you dimensions and dynamics. And those who are really anointed are just hearing. And watching the gap in knowledge. Garnished with pride. Is God helping someone? You must admit that you are limited. That is not negative confession. 
it is not demeaning what God has done in your life. With brokenness, there is something I do not know. Lord, guide me. The meek will he guide. The moment I've taught you this, when God finds humility and finds brokenness, something, there has to be something about this, my financial situation. I have done my best. Your best does not mean that is all to be done. It is just the best you know based on your knowledge. Do you know, let me tell you, ignorance and pride can make simple things so difficult. So difficult. Apostle, I can drive. Okay, let someone who can drive help you. No, no, no. I've been driving for a long time. It's just I've not had the opportunity to go to the road. Just give me the car. You come back with two headlamps, Paul said it was just a slight mistake. You cannot, you are not getting this thing. It's as simple as that. Apostle, I can cook. Three hours you are still roaming around in the kitchen. Nothing is done. Nothing is set. You are not even sure again of what you are doing. It was just a mistake. I think the stove or the... the... Our standard of knowledge in this ministry is mastery. Until you are there, you are not yet there. Don't say I know to what degree. Are we together now? Yes. Admit that you are limited as a man of God. Spirit of the living God, I cry for your wisdom. I admit I do not know. I am limited. I can learn. I can do this, but I am limited. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Humility. Number two, very quickly. Is someone learning? What is the second key to accessing the leadings and the guidance of God? Pray earnestly for divine direction. Pray earnestly for divine direction. Listen, when it has to do with direction, it is a risk to assume. The devil can open a door for you that you will think it is God. I've taught you even the prison has a door. Before you enter the prison, a door must be open. So just because a door is open, you need to verify where that door is going. There are some doors that are going into prison. Pray earnestly for divine direction. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. First Samuel 30 and verse 8. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? I hope you know the man who is speaking was a warrior. Already had the arsenal to bring victory. But he said, no assumption. Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover. It is powerful when you are running with a sure word. You don't see challenges on your way because you know that God... Listen, it is vain it to wake up in the morning. Is that in your Bible? And to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Just because you have money does not mean you should start business. No, the presence of capital is not a green light to start. No. We make all kinds of flimsy mistakes and we keep repeating it. That's why God has sent you to the house of God. Can I tell you, when you are physically prepared, you stand the risk of making more mistakes. Because all the factors are there. Chances are excellent, you will not respect the excellency of his voice. Shall I pursue shall i overtake and the lord says since you paid attention to my leadings go ahead and pursue you shall surely overtake and without fail recover all you must pray earnestly for divine direction and there are two ways you hear from god in prayer write it down please number one through the light from scripture so that will be two a light from scripture this is the first way God speaks to men in the place of prayer. Psalm 119, I believe verse 105. Please give it to us. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. 
So God speaks to you by giving you light from scripture. Is someone learning now? Light from scripture. In the place of prayer, serious prayer, not prayer and browsing. Not prayer and watching movie. You are just watching the part you don't like. You quickly pray while you are waiting. No, no. I mean heartfelt prayer. When your spirit man is attuned, pay attention to the scriptures that come. Sometimes they can be scriptures ordinarily you would not have remembered. You see that? But it just jumps up from the spirit. It's a time to write it down. What could God be saying? God speaks to us when we pray through the light that comes from scripture. And then number two, he speaks to us through the voice of his spirit. Isaiah 30, 21. I hope you know God speaks to men. Yes, he does. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. You shall hear a voice. In John 16 and verse 13. Please give us John 16 and verse 13. Jesus was teaching and he said, How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. The Bible says he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. So the Holy Spirit speaks. He speaks, he guides. The Bible says the, the Spirit speaketh expressly. Pay attention to the speakings of God when you pray. Most times when you hear God and it's not in the place of prayer, the margin of error is very, very wide. Let me tell you. Because you see the, the, the haziness that comes from the daily activities. Chances are excellent that what you thought you heard may not have been God. So number one, the first key to accessing the leadings of God is you must admit that you are limited and in need of his leadership. Number two, you must pray earnestly for divine direction. Number three, you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters. You must open up your heart for supernatural encounters. One of the ways that God leads men is by granting them access to supernatural encounters. Please write it down. You must open up your heart for supernatural encounters. Particularly dreams and visions. Please write it down. You must open up your heart for supernatural encounters. Particularly dreams and visions. Look up ladies and gentlemen. Can I tell you this? I don't know what has happened to your dreams and visions. But tonight in the name of Jesus. Let there be a correction of it. There are certain heights that when you get to and your dreams and visions have not been purified, you will destroy yourself and destroy others. Dreams are powerful prophetic channels that communicate the leadings of God. Otherwise, Satan would not be interested in your dreams. I can tell you, he knows what is contained in dreams and visions. Genesis 41. Let's read the first seven verses. Genesis chapter 41, please. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river, reading to seven. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat flesh. And they fed in the middle. Uh -huh. Verse three. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed. And stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. Pharaoh is dreaming now. And the ill-favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well-favored one. And Pharaoh awoke. He slept again. 
and he dreamed the second time. I hope you know this was a revelation of something that had a national economic implication. So why would God choose to reveal something that had that gravity? I mean, a whole nation could be wiped in famine and God chose dreams. Respect dreams. Are we together? He dreamt the second time and behold, seven ears of corn came up on one stalk, rank and good, six. And behold, seventeen ears blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. Final verse now. It says, And the seventeen ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. There are many things that we have called dreams, but they are prophetic blueprints for the next two, three, four, five, ten years of our lives. Sometimes warnings, sometimes green lights. But because we have not been able to discern, next year I have a series on prophetic experiences, dreams, visions, angelic encounters. I want to teach you this thing so that you will understand. You have to be able to understand the place of dreams, visions, and even prophetic experiences. If you're learning, say amen. amen. In Exodus chapter 3, give us from verse 2 to 5. Exodus 3, 2 to 5. Watch this now. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, the him being Moses now, in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Verse 3. It says, And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. While the bush... Help me now. My screen. While the bush is not burnt. Verse 4 now. It says, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Verse 5. It says, draw, nigh, draw not nigh here. Put off thy shoes for the place where thou standest is holy ground. So he used a vision, a prophetic experience. Remember, that was the one encounter that turned a murderer to become a deliverer. Many have ignored supernatural encounters. In 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4, this was the encounter of Solomon now. Always inspires me every time I read this. The king went to Gibeon, the Bible says, and sacrificed there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon the altar. Verse 5. It says, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. How? So God can appear to men through dreams. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. Verse 6. And Solomon said, in the dream, oh, God is asking him in a dream. He's replying in a dream. Imagine if you were Solomon's wife. You went to bed, honey see you in the morning, and while you are sleeping, turning east and west, and all the things people do when they are sleeping, you know, people can turn literally 180 degrees while they are sleeping and not even be aware. They just get up and know that the pillow is, people sleep in all kinds of interesting ways. While all that drama is happening, a man is encountering the God of the Bible in a very destiny-defining way. The wisdom that he would wake up with would be what would distinguish him as the wisest man that ever lived. And yet God chose a dream. Thou hast shown unto your servant great kindness and all of that and all of that. And he asked him for several things. Let's go to verse 13 for sake of time. Let's just do 13 to 16 and then we'll end. He answered him and said, because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, I have given you understanding like no other person has got. And then he says, and I have also given thee, 13 now, that which thou hast not asked, both riches in the dream now. How do you give riches in a dream? How do you give honor in a dream? So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all your days. 14. It says, and if thou will walk in my way, still in the dream, and keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen your days. Long life, still in the dream. Last verse, please. 
of verse 15 now and solomon awoke so it was a dream and behold again the bible says it was a dream and he came to jerusalem and stood before the ark of the lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants that means he said let's dance and rejoice and the people say wow the king is in a good mood not knowing that a transaction has happened in a dream could it be that throughout this year god has been trying to transact realities with men it is not only when you come to church like this ladies and gentlemen every time you go to sleep see it as an opportunity to step into a realm where destinies are defined because you do not know these demons are also waiting with their package it's like a menu fear intimidation and the moment you lay your head there you are in secondary school writing a demonic exam that you never pass or that never finishes and if there is anybody here under the sound of my voice going through those wicked experiences seeing yourself in a former house writing exams that never finish in the name of jesus christ i declare you are delivered right now only a will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end in my life only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end thank you for staying to the end of this message but before you leave i want to tell you a story there was a father who has two sons and so he sent two of his sons to the farm like to go and harvest yam so he called them both and sent them the elderly one says he is going to go that he is going to like go on the errands but the younger one says he is not going to go and so they left the presence of the man and behold the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went but the one who says he was not going to go at a point he thought within himself and said my father has been very responsible for me so i will go so he changed his mind and went so i want to ask among these two sons who actually does the will of the father it is the younger one so as you have listened to this message it's not about listening alone if you listen and probably you feel stirred up but later on the zeal the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies and you do not apply this message it means the time that you dedicated listening to them to this message was a waste so it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone. It is more of what you take out of th those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better. So I do hope and I pray that this message will transform your life, will turn your life around.